Welcome back, Hashimo bros and Hashimo sistos. Today, reading more from the World Wide Web of Reddit. Bah, too many W's and R's. I used to, sh I have dyslexia, and I, I used to struggle with that as a kid. I used to say, refrigerator. Other topic. We're going to talk about Hashimoto's today. I'm reading more stories lately. People are struggling. Doctors suck. They don't know what to do about it. They think prescribing levothyroxine is going to be a cure-all, and it's just not. We're still completely debilitated, and I'm going to read into some of that today. So this person says, I feel helpless and overwhelmed. There's a pervasive notion that levothyroxine doesn't comprehensively address autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It merely fills the gap left by a deficient thyroid hormones. As for managing and coping with Hashimoto's, patients are often left to navigate the complexities on their own. They're advised to maintain discipline, adopt healthy lifestyles, and prioritize physical activity even in the face of discomfort and pain. Unfortunately, this dynamic creates fertile ground for the emergence of health gurus and coaches who prey on the vulnerability of individuals grappling with pain and fear. Yeah. Moreover, achieving what's often termed as Hashimoto's remission appears to be an ever-evolving concept. Strategies purported to lead to remission frequently change, often resting more on speculative theories than on concrete evidence of patient improvement. For instance, dietary recommendations seem to fluctuate unpredictably. I experienced this firsthand when my nutritionist recommended illuminating eliminating gluten, milk, soy, and various vegetables like nightshades, broccoli, asparagus, and pak choy. However, adhering to these restrictions left me feeling not only miserable but only financially strained as I devoted nearly all my time and resources to managing food-related concerns. Additionally, I noticed a rapid loss of muscle mass. <sighs> Now there's emerging research suggesting that foods like broccoli, asparagus, garlic, and Brussels sprouts may actually promote gut health and prevent conditions like leaky gut, whose, ex whose existence remains uncertain to me. This contradicts previous advice, leaving me bewildered and skeptical of dietary recommendations. In essence, the journey of managing Hashimoto's is fraught with uncertainties and contradictions. Patients are left grappling with shifting guidelines and conflicting nonsensical advice, making it exceedingly challenging to find a sense of stability. Lots to unpack there, but she's hitting the nail on the head with a lot of things. I myself gave up meat for over a year per the recommendations of my gastro gastroenterologist's advice. Um, he was claiming that protein is sometimes hard to break down for certain people with stomach conditions. And yeah, I made myself miserable for over a year and still sometimes doing that because, yeah, it was financially straining to keep up with all the supplements that I'm taking and <laughs> like I've not been able to have a steady job within all these years because every other day I'm shitting blood. I have a lot of the stomach issues with this disease, which I, I'll read into some of these in a second. But uh, yeah, food differences. I cut out gluten. I don't drink milk. I stay away from soy as much as possible. Um, none of that seemed to help. Unfortunately, I mean, it helps some people because some people with this also develop celiac disease. So it's good to get tested for some of those additional autoimmune things. Um, but yeah, I, I started then introducing chicken and fish again to my diet and that seemed to help some things. Cause again, with like this person was saying, I was losing so much muscle mass. Uh, my legs are sticks right now. I mean, you can see it in my face. If you compare it to like an old video, I used to be kind of moon-faced. And that's when my thyroid wasn't being treated. Um, and I wasn't as... I was still pretty healthy dietary-wise, but I wasn't as strict as I have had to be all these other years. Uh, let's get into some of the comments, see if they're saying anything of interest. 
So this person says, I hear you when I got diagnosed and started researching contradicting info everywhere and I'm still trying what works best. I'm currently facing heat waves, which is new to me. Gotta love Hashimoto's. It's just this shit is serious. I'm facing having to go on disability, as am I, and I'm sure if they're even going to look into it. Yeah, they were very, like every doctor is pretty dismissive because even... I have a family member, I won't mention names, but they are in a relationship with someone in the medical field and they work with patients with Hashimoto's and they still function normal, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's very dismissive. And that's coming from a health health provider. Um, it's lonely, this disease. There's no one that takes it serious, it feels like. And you are left to fend for yourself and like this person was saying so it causes severe depression it causes anxiety it causes let alone all the physical crap it ta it does on you because your hormones aren't making your organs function properly and mine specifically causes severe digestion issue i don't know if it's digestion more so than motility because i think i also have another health issue with neuropathy that I feel like is contributing to like slow gut motility and such. But this disease comes with core morbidities often, core morbidities. It means multiple autoimmune diseases. And most doctors hate to look into it for some reason. I had to actually educate myself for over a year and to understand what an actual rheumatologist does so I can go in guns a blazing theoretically and say I need this checked I need this checked I need this checked and then they kind of dismiss you I'm like why why do you say that why do you think that blah 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 and I'm like because I want to know for certain because I felt like shit for three years okay so yeah this shit's been frustrating as well so um keep pushing to find a healthcare provider that's in your corner that has your best interest that wants to keep up to date and keep checking deficiencies and where your TSH is fluctuating your reverse T3 is important to make sure it's converting properly in the in the liver so it's a long road I tell you I've had my days for sure and I'm still struggling on my days with this on top of a lot of the other issues but today we're just focused on Hashimoto's pr primarily so this person talks about being in pain all the time and uh, again this causes like joint pain headaches etc etc and it's like it overlaps with so many other possible ailments so all doctors are very hesitant to say yeah it's exactly your Hashimoto's attacking your body like this so they don't want to say that type of stuff usually this person says I've been diagnosed more than a decade every time I've been like ouch my body hurts I'm so tired doctors have been like I don't know what's wrong with you when it's probably been the effing hypothyroid hypothyroidism this whole time I don't know if the migraines are related to this either they probably might be this person says magnesium glycinate for the migraines and vitamin B deficiency is associated with the migraines. I take my magnesium citrate because my gut issues and it helps act more like a laxative type so it helps keep me soft so it ain't cutting me up as badly. Um, and I also, like I just showed you, I take vitamin B12. It makes me less foggy in the brain, I feel. I'm more sharp when I've been taking it. So I can definitely tell. And I think some of my blast blood work, I'm not going to pull that up today, but it was showing it was maybe, I think it was still tech. Actually, one of them was wrong. It might have been my B6 that was low. Can't remember now, but even B12 was on the lower end of the in range stuff. So definitely. Take B12 if you have Hashimoto's. I don't think that would hurt. I also take vitamin D, this person mentions, because uh, that can contribute to like low back pain and such sometimes for some people. Um, 
Yeah, they just keep talking about vitamin B, magnesium, not sleeping well, if another symptom of low, low thyroid. Yeah, I've been kind of, I've had like a lot of hip aches and pains at night, and I don't know how much of that is my neuropathy versus this, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you on that one. Uh, I, I take CBD as well. It does take the edge off of the pain. It doesn't solve anything, unfortunately, but it's better than suffering full-blown, so... Um, my doctor told me today that high triglycerides and weird cholesterol is often a sign of thyroid problems. I was blown away since that was the first time I had ever heard of it. You can see I upvoted that because my recent blood work also came back as my triglycerides were crazy out of range. I don't know how crazy they were. They were just out of range. My cholesterol looked fine still, luckily. Like I said, I eat... I fast, I pretty much only eat one meal a day for the most days and maybe a light snack with like guac and tortilla chips. Um, so I have fatty liver disease too, so I don't know, sometimes that, I know that could be connected with the thyroid as well. Uh, yeah, this thyroid shit affects a lot of things in a person's body and it's it's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Did I have this first or did I have leaky gut first? Because the thing that started all this for me is when I took antibiotics and it messed up my gut. And then all of a sudden I've been shitting blood since. So anyway, so what types of pain? She reports headaches, sore muscles, and joint pain, especially around my ribs, lower back, jaw, knees, ankles, elbows, Achilles tendon, arches, neck, sometimes hip if I walk weird. My mom has a theory that I have EDS, but I don't tend to randomly dislocate joints, so I don't think that's what it is. Yeah, uh, I have low back pain, but I have like spine problems, so I can't, I can't say for certain. Like, like I said, this has so many overlaps with other problems that, for me, they're probably just compounding on top of each other. But start with vitamin D, like most people are saying, that's good advice if you're experiencing pain. Start with just the supplements, start with changing your diet, stay away from gluten and sugars, like inflammatory, like stay away from inflammatory foods. Start taking anti-inflammatory foods, like turmeric, um, and some people are weird on certain spices, so just introduce them slowly if if you're like really sensitive to certain foods, but... Like the previous person said, most food, food changes I've made have not made a difference for the most part. I mean, there's certain foods I have to eat to keep it soft. Um, but as far as all my other symptoms, like, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, people report needing a higher dose. That's all going to depend on your TSH range. So if, if as long as you're like below... I mean, four is the high end. Most people with this disease want to be around two. So take that for what it's worth. Be below four at least. If you're above like a five and stuff, definitely urge your doctor to start on medication for at least the, the hypothyroid part. And like, you're not going to stop the antibodies from attacking your thyroid tissue and then that's going to cause fluctuations of where the hormones and stuff so that's you know you, you can never really get away from all the symptoms of this disease uh for most i mean i don't know i can't say for most people i don't there's not really a def definite poll but it seems like most people aren't getting over their symptoms the ones that are writing on this forum there's a few that claim it's going into remission and like the other person said there's too many health gurus now that had like very minor symptoms and they like stop drinking milk and it changed my life that's what you need to do no there's it's way more complex than that uh the last one i'll talk about on this video because i experienced this too and i bring up to doctors and they're confused and like have you checked for GERD and acid do you have acid reflux and such and not typically I occasionally it's just not common I have that 
the acid reflux, most of my stomach issues are on the lower end of like my large intestine stuff. Um, but this person's wondering if anyone else is suffering from extreme nausea due to Hashimoto. The blood test didn't show anything wrong except thyroid levels. Uh, blah, blah, blah. No nausea med that usually worked for me works now. Usually I have a slight headache with the nausea and I suffer from reflux sickness, but usually don't get nausea from it. And if I do, it's totally different. And reflux meds also don't help with this nausea. They help fine with stomach cramps and such though. If anyone else ha has this, uh, is there a way to make it better? Can't keep calling in sick due to nausea. So yeah, this person still has, you know, we all have to fucking make a way to get on with life. And it sucks when you have this disease. I'm going to pause this video. My dad's calling me. Okay, sorry about that. We are talking about nausea and Hashimoto's. This person's experiencing it. Finds out it's re kind of related. Although doctors are confused and keep thinking it's not. <laughs> uh, these people would beg to differ. Strange thing is I can keep eating whatever I want when I'm nauseous and I never actually throw up. So it's strange. I never had a gag reflex like this, luckily. But recently, I think... A few things I thought might have to do with reflux might actually be related to Hashimoto's, but it's difficult to say since both are causing stomach and digestive issues. This person should suggest sit down on a sheet of paper, write out every single condition. Sit down. Oh, and <laughs> sit, don't sit on a paper. That's not going to do anything for you. But write down every single condition you have been diagnosed with and their symptoms you have, then write down those symptoms you have no clue about. Highlight all the symptoms shared between conditions. I've been doing this since I was a teen and still do it to this day. I even have my daughter do it so she gets into the habit. This will at least give you a chance to see the bigger picture of what's affecting you, whether or not it's shared, aka double symptoms, and help you remember. It's pretty good advice because, uh, like I said, a lot of these symptoms kind of overlap with each other of other auto or just other ailments in general so but yeah nausea is something i get often I'm, i won't say it's like super super frequent but it's pretty often i need to be more mindful of like when it's happening because it used to be always in the morning it actually would be after i have a bowel movement and that's when my stomach would get really weird so it was, I don't know, I feel like just because now it's finally creating space or whatever after I've evacuated and start, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but I started getting nauseous myself, but never to the point of where I'm going to throw up, usually. I think, I think I, I, there's times where I feel like if I were to push myself physically during those moments, I probably would have thrown up. Uh, but I, yeah, when I feel shitty, I don't try to make it worse, so... Some other suggestions maybe to try. I know it helps with people that do have like acid reflux and I know it's different technically, but uh, baking soda and water, just a little bit. Um, you could squeeze in some lime juice as well because I've heard that that also gets alkalized and it reduces some of the acid. So if it is related to acid reflux, you could try that. That's probably the cheapest route to go if you're trying to like relieve those symptoms um but yeah anyway i'm gonna wrap up this video if you have hashimoto's comment below like what's been your biggest health challenge and also leave a recommendation too for others like something that you started having at the beginning that you've you know it, maybe you did find out you were, you had celiac disease. Say, like, yeah, I cut out gluten and list what has gluten in it because people don't even recognize, like, yeah, no more breads, no more pastas unless you, like, do a chickpea pasta, which I recommend. That's a pretty good alternative substitute. Uh, but, yeah, just I want to help other people. I want you to help other people if you have good advice. Um, so leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Leave a like. See you on the next one.